Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Matchbook series on the EBPL podcast. My name is Paul, and I will be your host. I'm the adult services librarian here at EBPL. And in the Matchbook series, what we try to do is touch on different subjects and genres of books and match people with books that might be good in those subject areas. So we're going to deviate from that format a little bit this week. Since this episode is coming out toward the end of the year, I wanted to talk about my five favorite books that I've read this year. Now, not all of these were written this year. I just happened to get around to reading them this year. But it still fulfills what I think of as the purpose of this series, which is to cover different bases. So I tried to pick out fiction nonfiction, some contemporary, some historical, and give different perspectives on each. These are in no particular order. I just wanted to get my five favorite ones out there. So let's start with The Doctor's Blackwell by Janice Nomura. Now, this did come out in 2021, and it's the story of Elizabeth and Emily Blackwell, two sisters who in the mid-19th century became the first women to receive medical degrees in the United States and to practice medicine in the United States. It's part memoir in a way because it documents Elizabeth and Emily's relationship with one another, but it also has to do with their achievements and progress in the field of medicine, how they were aided along the way by administrators and professors who went out of their way to train them and accept them into the universities. There's actually a great anecdote from the book on this matter where they left it up to the students in the medical college that Elizabeth applied to, to either accept or reject her. The professor was very straightforward with the students, said, here's the deal and you get to vote. And they accepted her on the basis that they thought the professor was joking. They thought the idea of a woman applying to medical college was so absurd that they all thought it was a practical joke and they accepted her. So that's how she originally became a medical student. This book is chock full of great anecdotes like that and about how people reacted to a woman wanting to become a doctor at this point in history. It also touches on, obviously, people weren't as welcoming as you'd expect. So they were stonewalled along the way in wanting to practice and people who would take them on to their practice, they found it very difficult to get research positions, any type of physician positions in America. So they were often going throughout Europe where they were a little bit more advanced on this subject of accepting women into the field. And while they were tremendously successful, I would say the book is inspiring in this way because they overcame a lot of obstacles, but it does a good job of remaining nuanced with regard to their personal temperament and character and how they could be somewhat off-putting in ways. So it does a great job of accepting the imperfections and realizing that the good they did for women and for the world was ultimately worthwhile and critical to the field. It is truly a well-researched biography that brings some fascinating historical figures to life. Figures that I personally never heard of before. And I love to find biographies about people who were decidedly instrumental in their fields, but that ultimately there's not too much public awareness of. Another great book I read this year was Normal People by Sally Rooney. She recently published another book this year called Beautiful World, Where Are You?, which I'm still on hold for. I'd like to get around to that one too, but Normal People is great as well. It concerns Connell and Marianne, two teenagers who are very different on the surface, but realize they have a lot in common in terms of how they see the world, how they have difficulty in getting to know other people their own age. They find it difficult to express themselves. And while they have this incredible bond with one another, they always seem to not be clicking in unison. And there's a lot of subtleties about family, friendship, class, and the psychological aspects of a relationship, how they get together, break apart. The book follows them over the course of several years. We can see the ebbs and flows in the relationship, how they grow together, grow apart, And it makes for a story that is profoundly lonely at times, but also hopeful at other points in the relationship. 
I, I certainly wouldn't call this a romance novel. What sets this book apart from so many other books that try to tackle a similar topic is that there's a precision in the way Sally Rooney writes that feels almost painfully true. She's able to conjure this tension and emotion to seem and convey feeling in a way that as you read the book and get to know more about the characters, it feels really specific to themselves. The interplay between these two characters is so earnest and true and at times very uncomfortable to read in the way that it feels too particularly honest to the developments from young adulthood to adulthood and how we begin to understand our emotions on a much deeper level. Another book that I particularly enjoyed this year is The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson. You may know him as the author of Devil in the White City about the murder H.H. H. Holmes. This book, Splendid and the Vile, is about Winston Churchill and England during the early days of World War II when Churchill had just taken over as prime minister and the Germans were waging a relentless bombing campaign killing 45,000 Britons. It shows Churchill as this charismatic leader, which we all know he was, but it's interesting to see it on a day-to-day -day basis, how he was able to rally the troops and rally the citizenry to have faith that they will still win the war. The Germans bombed facilities that they knew were important to the war effort, like manufacturing plants, but they also wanted to bomb residential areas because it wasn't just a about the hits to the war effort specifically, it was about degrading the morale of the English people. And what you see from Churchill is this uncanny ability to inspire faith in the English people. Larson does a great job of drawing on diary entries, archival documents, secretive intelligence reports, all of these things to paint a comprehensive picture of the state of England throughout 1940, 1941, and England's relationship with the United States as well, and how the United States, until Pearl Harbor, gradually became a piece of the Allied war effort. Another book I particularly enjoyed is The Sellout by Paul Beatty. It is a comedic novel about a young black man who tries to reinstate segregation. And if that sounds outlandish and bizarre, that is also how it comes across in the novel. In doing so, the protagonist reveals a lot of truths about race in America, and there's a lot of social commentary on race relations. The book often feels like it's equal parts Dave Chappelle type of humor combined with the eerie, almost ethereal qualities like Kurt Vonnegut. The author has such a deep sense of style, and I found myself laughing every time I picked up the book. But keep in mind, it is also incredibly vulgar. So if this seems like something you're interested in, definitely pick it up. If it's not really your style, I'd probably avoid it. The last book of this episode is... Destiny of the Republic by Candace Millard. It is a biography of President James Garfield, who was one of the more forgettable presidents. I almost feel like this is unfair to him. He was born into abject poverty, became a scholar, a Civil War hero, and a reformist congressman all before taking office. He was an incredibly intelligent man, probably one of the most intelligent to be president of the United States. He wasn't out for glory. He didn't even want to become president. He had to have the nomination forced onto him. He wanted to be a low-key leader from the sidelines, didn't revel in the glory of the presidency and what that could afford him. The author does a great job of making Garfield come across with vision and integrity. And unfortunately, he was shot a few months into his presidency by Charles Guiteau, he lingered for months, and this is a large section of the book as well, how he maintained his faith that he might be able to survive the shot, and how he managed to lead from a hospital bed as he was slowly bleeding to death and being infected from this bullet. Years before Alexander Graham Bell, 
invented the telephone. He also invented another, I don't want to spoil it, but he factors into this story as well, inventing something that tries to save Garfield's life. The end result is a great story that shows the overlap in history of Guteau, Garfield, and Alexander Graham Bell, and shows a slice of history that is often overlooked, a time and place that maybe we don't know as well as we should. And the end result is a book that is decidedly enjoyable, but also you'll find yourself learning so much along the way. I love when a history book can both provide information and entertainment at the same time. And I found it great fun to learn about everyone who's involved in this case. So those are my favorite books that I read in this past year. And thank you for joining me again. The EBPL podcast can be listened to at anchor.fm backslash EBP library or wherever you get your podcast. Melissa Hozik is the editor. So thanks to her and thank you all for joining me yet again.